One of the biggest changes you'll notice about the Stage 4 is the new panel layout. Previous models of the Stage had a panel A and a panel B. Now with the Stage 4, we have two organs, two pianos, and three synth layers, each of which can be controlled with a dedicated fader or switched on and off with these on and off switches. Effects can now be applied independently to each layer, or some of the effects can be applied globally. So you could have a different effects chain for synth A, synth B, and synth C, for example. There's also now a new preset library for the organ, piano, and synth section. Presets are saved with effects. So I could design a synth sound with effects, save that in my preset library, and then quickly combine it later with another preset from the piano section to quickly form new sounds. Let's make a sound by loading in some presets. I'm gonna to go to the synth preset library here and we can hear some of the sounds. I can also explore by category. Say I want a classic synth sound. For this sound, let's load a synth pad. I'm now going to load a second preset into layer B of the synth. To do that, I'm going to select layer B, press and hold shift, and press synth. Now I'm in single layer mode, which means I'm not going to lose what I have in layer A. Let's load the rain pad. Now if I want to hear those together, I press and hold A and press B. And I can adjust the levels of the two layers using the faders. Let's load a final sound into layer C. Again, I'm gonna go shift and synth. Now I'm in the single layer mode and I'm gonna scroll through by number to a sound I've saved earlier. And let's combine all three. Press and hold A, B and C. If I want to hear any of these layers without having to turn them on and off, I can solo by pressing the solo button, and the layer that is flashing is the one that I'm hearing. I exit that mode, and I can hear them all again. You'll see as I switch synth layers, the effects are switching with that. And that's because I have different effects chains for each layer. So if I want to adjust the chorus amount just on layer A, select layer A. I can add a reverb to layer C, I already have one, I can increase it. Let's add an EP. I'll switch on the layer here. And I'll select the Stockholm EP. Now if I want to turn down the entire synth section in one go, I can double press the section edit button. And now if I move any of these faders, all three layers will move together.
Any changes I make in the synth section now will also apply to all three layers, so I can adjust the filter frequency of all three together. You can also copy and paste layers. Let's copy this piano by pressing and holding copy and layer A. And then if I want to paste it to layer B, I press and hold shift, paste, and layer B. And now my piano from A has copied to layer B. I'm gonna switch that up the octave. One of the biggest changes on the stage four is that we can now assign different effects chains to different layers on the instrument. So on older models of the stage, you'd have an effects chain for panel A and an effects chain for panel B. But now we don't have the panel A and B architecture anymore. We have different layers in the piano, different layers in the synth, and different layers in the organ. You can assign different effects chains for each of those layers. You could, for example, assign a different effects chain for piano A and piano B and different effects for synth A, B, and C. We still have the option to assign the delay, compression, and reverb as global effects for the entire board. So I have my synth pad here that I made earlier, and I've taken off all the global effects. Let's add some different effects to each layer. So we'll start with layer A. I'm gonna solo just layer A so we can just hear that. And we'll add the new spin effect first. Let's also add a stage reverb. Now let's go to layer B. I'm still in solo mode and we can see that I'm now on layer B, this LED is flashing to show me that. You also notice that the layer effect focus moves when I switch the different synth layers. So this is always going to mirror what I'm seeing in the synth section. So now I'm on layer B, let's add a tremolo to this one. And we'll add a hall reverb. Now I'll come out of solo mode here so you can hear both together. And I can still make adjustments to the effects without being in solo mode, so I can increase the size of that reverb, for example. Finally, let's go to layer C and we'll add a cathedral reverb. I'm gonna add the variation here, which is a chorale setting. We still have the option to set the delay, compression, and reverb as global effects. So let's add a global compressor. I can do that by pressing and holding the on button, and that will give me the indication that LED show me that that's now globally affecting the Nord. And I'll do a global delay. The other way to access that is to hold shift and on. So this is now a global delay.
Let's take a look at some of the new features in the piano section. I have here the felt upright sound. The first thing to note is that all models of the Nord Stage 4 now have triple sensors in the keybed, which gives you much more dynamic control and a much more responsive experience when you're playing, especially with fast repeated notes. Another new feature is the dynamic compression section. So with that switched off, the keybed is going to respond full range to what I'm playing. As I increase the, the numbers on this dynamic compression, it will lift in volume the quietest samples, but won't change the tone of them. So the response will change, but the sound will stay the same. And the effect will be that the quietest notes I'm playing stand out more. The third new feature is unison. This adds stereo width to the sound by borrowing voices from neighboring notes. Let's make another sound using the Stockholm EP. I'm going to apply the dynamic compression here and the unison. How about some compression? And let's add a second layer to this. So I'm going to go to layer B and I'm going to select the silver ground. And then for them to play together, I press and hold A and press B. Let's put layer B up the octave. I'm going to add different effects to layer B. Let's do a cathedral reverb. Finally, let's assign the mod wheel to control the volume of layer B. To do that, I press and hold wheel and move the fader. Finally, I can save that as a preset in the piano preset library. If I press shift and store and then piano, I'm now storing as a preset instead of a program. I can rename the preset here. Press store again and then select the location I want to save that. And press store one more time.
Let's have a look at some of the new features in the organ section. The first one you'll notice is that all models of the Stage 4 now have physical drawbars as well as LED strips. So previously this was only available on compact models, now it's available on all three sizes. We have the organ preset library, which we can scroll through and find different presets. If I want to switch between the preset and the physical position of the drawbars, I press the preset button here. So now with the LEDs lit, I'm hearing what the preset is. And if I press preset, now I'm hearing what the physical drawbars are. If I want a quick way to sync these up, I can press and hold preset and it will sync to the physical position of the drawbars. Let's make a quick organ patch. I'm going to set a keyboard split by pressing the split button. If I press and hold, I can choose a different split point. I'm going to go down one here and exit there. Let's set organ A to be the lower half of the keyboard. Press shift and hold keyboard zone to choose the lower half. And now let's choose our organ model. We still have the usual B3, Vox, Farfisa, and two pipe organ models. We now also have a B3 bass option, and that gives you the lower two drawbars, which mimic what you'd have with foot pedals on an actual Hammond organ. Let's set layer B to be the upper half of the keyboard. So again, shift and keyboard zone. And then to hear both together, I press A and B. Finally, let's add a spring reverb. So the effects section is still global for the organ section. So we're going to choose the spring reverb here. The synth section on the Nord Stage 4 is modelled after the Wave 2. We now have three independent layers. We can assign either an analog, sample-based synth, or an external instrument to each of these layers. And then we can switch them on and off using the grey buttons, or adjust the volumes using these LED faders. Let's make a synth pad together. I'll start with layer A. For this, I want a saw wave. I can scroll through the different options here. I actually want to go to the shape menu. And with these, I can use the oscillator control knob to adjust the shape of the wave. Let's hear what these sound like. So let's choose shape saw, and then I'll adjust to my liking. 
Let's adjust the amp envelope. To do that, I go into the envelope menu here, and then I can adjust the attack, decay, and release times using these knobs. Let's add a filter. The filter section is on. If I go into the type menu, I can choose different types of filters. Let's use the Moog style ladder filter. I can drive that if I want, and I can adjust the keyboard tracking so that the filter opens up more the higher I play. Let's add a filter envelope. Again, if I go into the envelope menu, I can adjust the shape of that envelope and I can adjust the amount using the envelope amount control here. I want to add an LFO to this sound. So I'm going to choose oscillator pitch, and I can adjust the rate and the amount using these controls. I want a very slow LFO and a very small amount for this. Let's add unison mode, which is more like a chorus effect. And I'm going to add a vibrato, which if I go into the vibrato menu here, I can adjust the rate and the amount of that per patch. Let's add a second layer to our synth. I'm going to go to layer B here, and I want to load a preset. To load a single layer preset, I hold shift and press synth, and now I'm in single layer mode. So I'm only, only going to load something into layer B. I'm not going to lose what I have in layer A. Let's choose the stereo pad. I'm going to put that up the octave and adjust the filter frequency. Now let's hear both together. If I press and hold A and press B, Let's add one more layer. I'm going to go to layer C. And for this, I want to use a sample-based instrument. I go to the sample menu here, and I can scroll through different categories here. If I press and hold Shift, I've got a list view of that. I'm going to select a Mellotron sound. Let's adjust the amp envelope for that sound. I'm going to the same envelope menu here. Let's give that a slower attack. I'll put that up the octave. And now let's hear all three together. So I hold A, B, and C. So I'm adjusting the relative volumes of these layers using the faders. I can also use these to pan them in different directions. If I press and hold shift and pan, I can now pan these layers. Let's add some global effects. To make sure they apply to all three layers, I'm going to press and hold Shift and Group. 
and we'll add a chorus. We'll also add a delay. And finally, a reverb. Let's use the new cathedral reverb. Finally, let's save this as a preset in the preset library. So I hold shift and store. And to save as a preset instead of as a program, I now press synth and I can rename my patch here. Press store again, and now I can choose the location to save that. Press store one more time, and it's saved. Let's have a look at some of the more advanced synth features. I'm going to start with an FM synth sound here. There's five different algorithms I can choose from. I can control the partial amount here and the amount of modulation here. choose algorithm A. And let's make an amp envelope. I want a short plucky sound, so I'm going to go with a fast attack time and a fast decay. I want to use an arpeggiator on this. I start the arpeggiator using the red button here. And the first mode that comes up is a basic arpeggiator. I can control the rate here and the range here. If I go into the arp menu, I can change the direction. There's also a zigzag option. The second arpeggiator mode is poly. This is useful if I want to play chords. And the third mode is gate. If I go back to my amp envelope, and increase the decay here so I have a sustaining sound. We'll hear what the gate up does. Let's go with poly mode, and I want to sync this to the master clock. So I press and hold shift. Now this LED shows me it's synced to master clock. I can set the division here. I want 16th notes. And then let's set the tempo. Master clock, set that to 130.
Okay, let's add a second layer. I'm going to go to layer B here, and I want to choose a square wave sound. Let's add a filter. Let's choose the Moog style filter. And let's use the gate mode. Again, we need to sync this to master clock, so we press and hold shift. And we'll also do 16th notes here. Let's hear both together. Let's add one more layer, go to synth C, and I'm going to do a saw wave. And let's look at the pattern option. If I press and hold here, I'm now in pattern mode. If I go to menu page two, I can choose different patterns. So if I set this to master clock again, 16th notes, we can hear the different patterns. Just the pattern length here, if I want a different length, let's choose seven. And if I go to menu number three, I can edit this pattern using the position control to choose where I am and the gate control to add or delete notes. Menu number four, I can add accents to the pattern. And the arrow above the square shows that that particular note is accented. Finally, menu number five, I can pan any of these notes left or right. Let's hear all three together. Let's add some effects. To this layer C, I want to add a delay. So I'm on effects C here. Uh, let's sync the delay to master clock. Again, I press shift, and then I can pick my division. I want eighth notes. Let's add a compressor to layer B. Let's add a pump effect to layer A, which I also want to sync to master clock. Finally, I'll add a global reverb. If I press and hold, now the global LED is lit, so that's going to apply to all three layers. Finally, I can assign this arpeggiator to run without me having to hold the keys if I turn on keyboard hold. If there are any layers that I want to exclude from this, 
So let's exclude layer C. I just press Shift, and now this one is excluded from that rule. With the layer scene 2 function, you can have an alternate version of your patch with different layers switched on that you can access with a single button press. Here I have a synth pad with layers A, B and C switched on. For my layer scene 2, I want to have just layer A and I want to add a Stockholm EP. So to do that, I go into layer scene 2 here, switch on layer A of the synth, switch on my EP here. Now I can switch between the two with this button. I can also assign this to a pedal. If I go into the pedal menu, shift and pedal, and scroll through, here I have a Nord triple pedal. And I can set the left pedal here to be layer scene 2. And if I go back here, shift, layer scene 2. Now the pedal mode is engaged, and this function is tied to the left pedal. So if I press and hold the pedal, I'll be in layer scene 2. If I let the pedal go, I'll go back to my main patch. You can also assign a pedal to the pump function. Here I have a synth sound with pump switched on. It sounds like this. Now if I want to manually trigger that, I can go to the pedal menu here, shift and pedal. And I'm gonna set my left pedal to pump and then I'm gonna to go to the pump setting here and do shift variation. So now when I press the pedal, the pump feature will engage. Another option would be to sync the pump effect to the master clock and then use the pedal function to tap tempo for the master clock. So if I'm playing live with a band, we're not playing to a click, I have to come in on the next section and it needs to be in time, I can use this to tap tempo from the previous section. So to do that, I'm going to assign pump to master clock and set that to quarter notes. Now I'm going to go into the pedal menu, shift and pedal and then assign this pedal to master clock tap. Finally, I'll press shift and master clock, and now I can tap tempo with my pedal. So the final new performance feature is the ability to assign a volume pedal to mirror what the wheel is doing. So I still have my regular control pedal, but now I have a second volume pedal plugged into the organ swell jack. And I can assign that in the pedal menu. Shift and pedal. I go to swell pedal. And then under function, I can assign that to be wheel morph. So now everything I do with this pedal is gonna mirror the mod wheel. 
I have a simple EP here. Let's assign the control pedal to control the amount of tremolo. And I'll assign the mod wheel to control the amount of delay. So now if I'm playing something where I need two hands on the keyboard, I can actually control that delay send with my foot. The AUX keyboard function can be used to break out parts of the Stage 4 to be controlled by an external keyboard. In this example I've got my Wave 2 here, which will be my AUX keyboard. First I need to set up the global MIDI numbers so that they match. So I'm going to go into the menu of the Wave 2 here, Shift and MIDI. I'm going to set this to channel 5. Now on the Stage 4, Shift and MIDI. And then in my AUX keyboard option here, I'm going to set this to Receive on channel 5. So now I have a patch here with a pad on layer A of the synth and on layer B I have my synth lead. So I want to play this synth lead from the Wave 2. To do that I go into the AUX keyboard menu, shift and AUX keyboard, turn AUX keyboard on and on page 2 of the menu I can choose which section it's being assigned to. So I want to assign that to synth layer B and you'll see the AUX keyboard LED is now lit up to show me that that's what's being controlled by the AUX keyboard. I'm going to enable both layers A and B, and then we'll hear the pad played from the stage four and the lead played from the wave two. Now if I store that patch and go to a different patch, my AUX keyboard is going to do nothing. So this setting is saved per patch. The external function allows you to control an external instrument directly from the stage 4 and incorporate it into a synth sound as if it's part of the same sound. So I've got my Wave 2 here. The first thing I need to do is set up the global MIDI settings so that the stage 4 sends on the correct channel and the Wave 2 receives on the correct channel. So I'm going to go into the MIDI menu here and set the Wave 2 to receive on channel 3. And then I'll go into the MIDI menu on my stage 4, go to page 6. Here we see external channel. Now I can assign this to layer A, B or C of the synth section. I'm going to pick layer B and assign this to be MIDI channel 3 also. Now I'm going to go to layer B of the synth and enable the external mode. To do that I hold shift, now I'm in external mode. And now if I change the pr program change here, you'll see the wave 2 is moving in sync with that. So I can select my program directly from the stage 4. You can also control the level of this directly from the stage 4 here with the slider. And if I want to blend it with a sound on layer A, let's have layer A and B play together.
Now when I save this patch, I can save it to send on load. And what that does is when I select the patch on the stage four, it will send a program change message to my external board and the correct patch will show up on the wave two. To do that, I'm gonna go into the external menu one more time, go to the final page here and set send on load to on for layer B. I can also assign these two knobs as control change messages to send to the wave two. So let's assign control value one to change the filter frequency. To do that, I go into the external menu again. And on page five here, I can pick layer A, B or C. So I'm gonna pick layer B. And then I've looked in the manual for the wave two. The control change number I need is number 59. So if I set this to 59, I can now control the filter frequency right from here. Let's assign CC2 to be number 60, which is the filter resonance. Finally, I can assign these CCs to be controlled by morph. So I'm going to assign the mod wheel to control the filter frequency. To do that, I press and hold wheel and change this value and you'll see there's an M now, which shows that it is being controlled by morph.